We're back with the bigger picture. Hey, bye. The forgotten in three, two. They were 69 innocent women who went missing, many of them victims of serial killer Robert Picton. Some were shunned by society, others simply ignored by their families. And even in death, they were forgotten. Until now. Our Carolyn Jarvis tonight with a heart-wrenching story about one woman's mission to keep their memories alive. Anytime you want to look, you can look, okay? <sighs> Right, I'm sorry. They are tears to remember the forgotten. For 20 years, they simply vanished. Women who braved the streets of Vancouver's roughest neighborhood, some prostitutes, others battling mental illness, women who most would walk past and never give a second glance. It was only in their association that their absence was noted. 69 women in all, who wound up as two-inch images on a missing persons poster. Few ever knew their names. In a brush stroke, there was immense anger and grief. I've researched a lot of these stories for three and a half years and I'm still baffled. I'm still confused. I'm still blown away that, you know, 14 women in one year can go missing. Pamela Masick never met any of the 69 women but has spent nearly four years staring at each and every one of them. It's so disturbing to me that I look at the information and go, okay, like, this couldn't have happened. It is so, it's a disgrace. In her biggest project to date, Pamela has done something quite amazing. She's painted 69 larger than life portraits of every woman who disappeared, shining a light on their lives and their neglect. If you can imagine a room full of these paintings and someone walking in to look at these, what would that feel like? Who's on ex exhibition? There's Sheila, who was only 20 when she was last seen. Diane in her private school uniform. Deborah. She was one of the older women on the street. She was more, known more as a booster, so she would steal for her habit. Elaine. I discovered that she had gone to church when she was younger with her sister. And so this one is Bible pages covered in pages of the Bible. Yeah, the underpainting, yeah. Some of the portraits are very peaceful, others difficult to look at. It almost seemed as though their names weren't even important enough, and so I started naming them the file numbers, and that's how police would reference them. So they would know her as 952909934. Yeah, that's Dorothy. The darker ones tell a story of unimaginable violence and a gruesome death. Her last days of existence were probably some of the most horrific I've ever heard of in my life. Because 26 of these women have now been linked to serial killer Robert Picton. Mona Wilson's remains were found on his pig farm. Well, at the beginning of this project, I decided that I was going to reenact the, the death after birthing the paintings on the canvas. So the, the rips and the tears and the sewing up was this indication that they were found on the farm. Georgina Pappin was also murdered on that farm and etched into her portrait are the haunting words, I am here, but nobody sees me. The pain evident in her eyes and in those of the artist who created her. It's one of those things where I talk about it and <laughs> all of the emotions come up and how do you deal with coming here and looking at all these women every day? That's the hard part. It feels good to finish a painting, to complete it and say, I've done my best with this piece and now I need to let it go and move on. Until now, Pamela has been very private about her work, adamant this story isn't about her. But with her approval, we invited the family of one of Picton's accused victims to see the portrait of their loved one for the first time. Susie Kinchella is Wendy Crawford's sister. She did the best she could with what she was dealt with and, and when she needed to feed her children and didn't have the food, she'd go down to the streets and do what was necessary so that she could bring home a bag of groceries, you know. For 10 years, Kinchella struggled with her sister's disappearance, the charges and the trial. And so there is a certain nervousness leading up to this moment. Anytime you want to look, you can look, okay? 
Oh dear. Come here. I don't want to make you cry. I'm sorry. A moment of remembrance for a group of women who are seldom thought of. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. <laughs> and so I come here to just stay grounded, you know? After nearly four years in front of 69 massive canvases, it's amazing to think Pamela will be done in just a matter of days. The biggest project I've ever worked on. This might be my most significant body of work as an artist. I have no idea yet, obviously. She's decided to call the piece The Forgotten. Yeah, it's my way of saying, yeah, these women were forgotten and it wasn't right. You know, I can call it the remembered, but is that the truth? And while the project may be nearly finished, it hasn't come without a cost. The emotional toll has been immense, not to mention the financial toll. The canvases alone are worth $1,500 a piece. So you've easily spent $100,000 out of pocket on this project. <laughs> That's a good figure. But Pamela will never make a profit from this work. If it does sell, she says the money will go back into programs for the downtown east side. This isn't a project to create a band-aid. This is a project to inspire others to come together and make change in the community. And so while there may never be an applause after an extravagant showing, there are 69 pairs of eyes in this industrial studio, quietly saying thank you. Coming up next week on 16 by 9. Mexico may be a hotspot for tourists, but a terrifying drug war has crippled the country. And now the cartel violence is spilling over the border. We'll take you inside one of Mexico's most dangerous cities. In Juarez, there are no justice, there are no law, there are no government. If I go back to Juarez, I will be killed. Maybe my family too. That's coming up next week on 16 by 9. And that's it for us tonight. If you have a story idea for us, just give us a call at 1-877-TELL-69 or log on to global16by9.com. And remember, you can blog with us right after the program about any of the stories you saw tonight. And you can send us a video message on YouTube or Facebook. I'm Mary Garfello. Thank you very much for watching. And from all of us here, good night. Our final word tonight goes to our 16 by 9 viewers. Continue the great work and a great show. You're fantastic. Love watching you. 16 by 9. The bigger picture. That's a wrap.